morning to all of you. My name is Maria Hermans. I am from the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature. We are about to start our proceedings. I will invite the Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Nkopane, to now take the podium. Once again, ECCRPF, kindly switch off your camera. The proceedings are about to start. Kindly switch off your camera. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Kindly take the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hermans. Good morning uh, to all our esteemed guests. My name is Ndombo Vuyongupani. As uh, Ms. Hermans have mentioned, I'm the chairperson of the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians in the Eastern Cape sub branch. As we together here as guests and members of the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, I will be directing the first session of the proceedings and later hand over to the Honorable Speaker of the day, a young woman who will be presiding over today's session. Honorable Gaia will also be assisting us as one of the presiding officers. It is also important that I give a brief break background of the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, which is the network of women, women members of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. It also provides means of building capacity of women elected to parliaments and legislatures to be more effective in their roles, improving awareness and ability of all parliamentarians, male and female, and encouraging them to include the gender perspective in all aspects of their mandate and helping parliamentarians and legislatures to become gender sensitive institutions. The timing of the Young Women's Parliament that is today could not be more auspicious with the recent gruesome murder of the University of Fort Hay student, Ms. Nositelom Deveni that has led to widespread outrage among all sectors of our society. We have also seen high school pupils protesting against this group. Honorable Chair of Chase, you are muted. I wonder who is muting me now. Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Maria. I was saying we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have also seen high school pupils protesting against this gruesome killing of Ms. Mdebeni meaning the category of learners that we have assembled in our chambers today need to be heard. This means as the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians Eastern Cape sub-branch, we are moving a step towards the right direction by providing this sector of our society a platform to air their views to those that are responsible for enacting legislations. May I also acknowledge the presence of the following esteemed guests. The speakers in the program, members of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, MPs 
from parliament our cpa leadership led by the chairperson of the cpa honorable koboshiani the deputy chair of chairs in the legislature who is normally one of the presiding officers honorable duba speakers from various legislatures speakers <coughs> mayors and chief whips from the various municipalities <laughs> representatives from various women organizations nationally internationally and locally and all invited guests your presence signals the importance of this young women's parliament to all our sectors of our society. At this point, may I allow our technical team to play a women's anthem, that is our international women's anthem, the CWP anthem. technical team no sound have you managed to connect You can't hear a thing. There's no sound. No sound, Madam Chair. No sound at all. All across the nations, all around the world, women are longing to be free. No longer in the shadow supposed to stay behind but side by side in true equality so sing a song, sing a song for women everywhere let it ring around the world and never never cease so sing a song, sing a song for women everywhere equality development and peace we men can't be silent when all around the world people hurt and hungry children cry. We'll sing out now for justice and development and all the rights of other people high. So sing a song, sing a song for we men everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease to so sing a song. Sing a song for women everywhere. Equality, development, and peace. We men now are working to build a better world where the love of peace can rest on every shore. When men lay down their weapons and learn to love and share, and people work to bring an end to war, so sing a song, sing a song for women everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease 
sol, sing my song, sing my song for women everywhere. Equality, development, and peace. So sing a song, sing a song for women everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease. So sing a song, sing a song for women everywhere. Equality, development, and peace. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, honorable members, for singing so nicely the women's anthem. Shall we now look at our program for the day and start with the with the welcoming, uh, the official opening of this young women's parliament. Shall we now uh, request the Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs? To come to the podium. Over to you, Honorable Duba. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy, Honorable Chair of Chairs program director, learners from various schools of the province participating in this parliament, management of various schools participating in the Young Women's Parliament, officials from the Department of Education, management of the legislature, members of the provincial legislature and other legislatures, deputy chairperson of the CP, CWP, ECPL sub-branch, Honorable Ms. P. Fanta, CPA, ECPL, Sub Branch Chairperson, and Deputy Speaker, Honorable Koboshian, Program Director, Honorable Ngomban. We meet for the Young Women's Parliament today during a difficult period in our province when we're trying to get to terms with the gruesome killing of a young woman from the University of Forte, whose life was taken away abruptly, abruptly by a merciless young man in Quick, East London, last week. The murder of the final year law student, Nostello Kembeni, is one of too many violent attacks on women in this country. Honorable, there's no sound now. Are you muted? Honorable Duba, please check your gadget. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs. Uh, we're trying to locate him, Honorable Chair of Chase. Trying to locate him. We'll revert to you now. Okay.
it's a pity in in parliament <clears throat> that is in the house when one has got lost like we have lost now the honorable member we can't sing like we usually do in church city um fundis there is no verse <laughs> Honorable Chair of Chairs, sure. it does seem as if it is a connection problem. Unfortunately, the member's line is also dead now. We have been trying and will update you, but I, I, we propose that we continue with the program as the Honorable Members lost network with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Herman for 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 your proactive um advice to the house shall we proceed um and request honorable zinzi to take the next item that is the introduction of the speakers over to you honorable zinzi honorable zinzi is one of the cwp members in the eastern cape provincial legislature sub branch Honorable Zindi, over to you. Good morning, ladies, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce the following esteemed speakers who have vast experience in different fields and highly qualified. The legislator, the legislator, much appreciates your participation and bestowing us with your presence. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to introduce the following speakers. Mm -hmm. Honorable Marta Wangari is the current elected member of parliament for Gil Gil constituency since 2017. She is elected in the ruling Jubilee party. She previously served as a nominated senator in the Senate of the Republic of Kenya from 2013 to 2017. She was born on 7th July 1983 in Oranga district in the, in the then central province. She is an alumni of University of Nairobi, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in statistics in 2008. She holds a postgraduate diploma in human resources management. She is passionate and about empowering. She is passionate about empowering the youth on matters of leadership. She believes leadership skills should be honed from the earliest age possible. She was an active university student leader, having served in various capacities in the students' organization of Nairobi University. So in the following, in the following positions, finance secretary, vice chairperson of the science students and vice chairperson academic affairs in Sonu from 2006 to 2007. Honorable Wangari was the first woman senator in the Republic of Kenya to sponsor a bill that was enacted into law when she served as a senator. She has carried over the same zero to the National Assembly where she has sponsored a bill on employment that is now part of laws of Kenya. She is an active member of the Defense and Foreign Relations Committee and Delegated Legislation Committee in the National Assembly. Her current legislative proposal is the amendment to the Birth and Death Registration Act. The legislative proposal is, an, is in the second reading stage in the National Assembly. The second speaker is Honorable Peggy Hadel, member of the National Assembly Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. Honorable Hadel is a member of parliament 
of the Republic of South Africa and the majority party, the African National Congress. He has served as a councillor in the city of Cape Town Metro, Metro Municipality. He is the former pres president of Convocation, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, the former provincial chairperson, BMF student chapter Western Cape, and was the provincial deputy chairperson, SASCO Western Cape. Una Rokmohadebe is a civil engineering technician as well as a project manager by training. He holds a national diploma in civil engineering as well as a BTEC degree in project management from the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Then the third speaker is Dr. Andile Dube, Education Manager for Quality and System Strengthening UNICEF Southern Africa. Dr. Andile Dube is the Education Manager for Quality and System Strengthening and at the UNICEF. Her role includes supporting the strengthening of learning outcomes in literacy and numeracy, care and support for team and learning as well as generation unlimited programs amongst other areas of work. Dr. Dube has supported other small scales and large, and large literacy. She has worked in the private sector and non-governmental youth programs. She has worked as a researcher for the University of Devon, Westville. She was an educator at Adams College a senior business intelligent consultant at Deloitte, a director for youth programs at Love Life, a director for systematic and schools program at Zenet Foundation, a head of what a head of Wadacom Foundation, CSI Education, and a consultant at the net providing technical assistant to the DBE for systemic programs. Dr. Dube's main competencies include Dr. Dube's main competencies include school to work transition for young people, youth development, adolescent sexual reproduction, sexual reproductive health and sexual rights, HIV AIDS prevention, skills development, monitoring and evaluation, project management, learning and development, compliance and risk analysis, business and market analysis, impact studies, cross-industry research, intelligence and people development. Dr. Dube is an active contributor towards community development and an advocate for social economic rights. The fourth speaker and the last one is Ms. Nombuso Mashele, UNICEF Southern Africa. Ms. Nomuso Mashele is a 25-year-old young woman who is passionate about making a positive impact in her community and the world at large. She is a social activist and a public speaker with an interest in improving access to education and eliminating threats to the future of children, youth, and women. Nomuso was born and bred in a small town, in a small township called Matsulu in the Mpumalanga province in South Africa, where she says her heart is. She attended primary and secondary school in the same community and later, she attended, she attended primary and secondary school in the same community and later qualified to study law at the University of Johannesburg, where she obtained her Bachelor of Law, LLB degree, as well as her Master's in Law, LL, LLM degree, which focused on addressing discrimination and eliminating inequalities in the workplace. She believes that understanding the law is a critical for one to stand up for the rights of others, particularly the rights of people who are, ma who are marginalized and often voiceless. As a young school going girl, Nomuso was involved in numerous peer education programs 
where she often led programs that addressed issues faced by learners and came up with solutions that were tailor-made for learners. She is an ambassador of change and believes that anyone can make a difference in the world if they have an interest to. In 2012, she became the president of the Girls and Boys Education Movement, GBEM, in Pumalanga province where she played an integral role in the development of the movement's constitution, vision, mission, and core values. Now also joins UINCEF South Africa in June 2021 as an intern in the education section dealing with the matters on quality and system strengthening. In this role, she continues to advocate for educational rights of children across South Africa through interventions that improve access and, equality and quality in education. She aims to continue advocating for the betterment of livelihoods of children, youth and women. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Zindi. Um, Honorable members, before we proceed to the next item, let us ensure that our mics are always muted when we are not on the floor, and also ensure that we, our, our, our cell phones as well, our cell phones and all the gadgets are muted when we are not on the floor. Thank you so much, because the rules of the legislature uh, apply even if it's a young women's parliament. This is a parliament. So let us obey the, 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 the rules. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Zindi. We are having um, these uh, international guests with us today and we are also appreciating their presence in the eastern cape provincial legislature um house today uh, hosted by the cwp led by its executive honorable fanta as the deputy chairperson of the cwp Honorable Gaia, I've mentioned earlier on, and, and Honorable Kotoi as the, 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 the executive of the CWP. Thank you so much. Shall we now uh, take the next item that is introduction of the topic? And we shall request the Honorable Ms. Martha um, the Honorable MP of Kenya to give us the introduction of the topic. Over to you, Honorable Member. Please unmute. Please unmute, Honorable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The leadership of CWP, the executive, all the esteemed uh, panelists here. It's my great pleasure to join you from Kenya. And uh, I have a very easy task being the first person to talk because I'll be setting the, uh, the parameters for the meeting, maybe, that will continue uh, later in the day. And uh, I will have a very simple presentation. I've divided it into three sessions. One will be just the general introduction. Uh, part two will be technology empowering young women socially with specific emphasis on gender-based violence. The third one would be technology and empowering young women economically. And finally, I will have recommendations. In the recommendation sections, I will do a bit of correlation of what is happening in my country because and unless you domesticate it, then it doesn't make much sense. So if you allow me, allow me to do this, exploring means of supporting young women to engage uh, socially 
with specific emphasis on GBV, economically to foster development in their communities through digital technology. Part one, I'll deal with introduction. The sustainable development goals, that is SDG 17. SDGs are 17 integrated global goals adopted by the United Nations on 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. The goals point to the importance of balancing socioeconomic and environmental sustainability for development. In specifics, the fifth SDG is gender equality, which is a testament to the fact that empowering women and girls support economic growth and development. I don't think that is something we can even debate. It's actually been proven. We have seen it as practitioners and we see it every day. One of the targets under the sustainable goal of gender equality is to enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular, information and communications technology to promote the women empowerment. Technology is an important enabler for the empowerment of the young women in the middle and lower income countries. Mobile and internet connect connectivity has rapidly taken place, resulting in significant changes in the way that people live, work, interact, and organize. In my country, to be specific, uh, we have grown for the last 30 years from a mere less than 10% to almost now 70, 80% in terms of having mobile phones for every person in this country. Technology and empowering young women, socially with specific emphasis on gender violence. Technology can be used to address the counter technology facilitated gender based violence, GBV. It provides new avenues to prevent and respond to gender based violence. In my country, we have what we have, we have a lot of uh, exposure in terms of the uh, online plat platforms. We have even put specific gender based violence report desks in police stations that if it happens, you can easily be flagging it out to the police as they should work on it. Um, the International Center of Research on Women, ICRW, developed a definition for understanding technology-facilitated GBV, which is an essential step in preventing it and supporting those who experience it. Technology-facilitated GBV is an action by one or more people that harm others based on their sexual or gender identity or by enforcing harmful gender norms. By harmful gender norms, I mean the violence, I also mean gender mutilation or other female uh, mutilation, what we have in some areas, even in my country. This action is carried out using the internet and or mobile technology and include taking, stalking, bullying, sexual harassment, defamation, hate speech, and exploitation. From our experience, even in parliament here, I would say by the time you get a murder committed by, uh, uh, to a woman or what we call femicide. There has been, a, normally there has been a, a pattern. Someone who is known to you has called you, has threatened you, has followed you, has bullied you. So these things are always interrelated. Globally, measures are being put in place to make use of technology to improve women's access to services, as well as reduce the risk of sexual harassment. For example, in the United States of America, my plan, a decision aid, was designed to help survivors of intimate partner violence chart a safe way forward. In India, the Urban Institute and the Information Technology University, Punjab, worked together to record hotspots where transport users had experienced violence or harassment or felt unsafe in Lahore. In Kenya and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Messi, uh, Medicap is a mobile application launched by Physicians for Human Rights for clinicians to use in collecting, documenting, and preserving medical evidence to support prosecuting of sexual violence crimes. I say that because you cannot have a conviction if your prosecution cannot stand a chance to defend it. And normally what we have here, we get abusers, they actually tell the girls or the young women to take a shower, you lose the evidence, so we are now actually sensitizing the clinicians and the medical practitioners to ensure that it's prevented so that we help the prosecution in terms of ensuring that it is concluded and concluded uh, effectively. Governments and 
uh, relevant stakeholders should therefore work at increasing young women's awareness of these tech solutions, along with sensitizing them on their legal rights against gender-based violence and how to access conventional support from trained professionals. The statistics we are dealing with in my country is that three out of five attacks are usually from someone you know, an uncle, an intimate partner, someone who you actually get comfortable with. So we have to actually continually educate the young girls to be able to speak out that it's not okay because it's coming from someone you know. It's not okay because it's someone you have had a relationship before, that we should call it out for what it is. Part three, technology and empowering young women economically. Communication and networking beyond one's physical borders has been facilitated by information and communication technologies. ICTs. I say that because even when it happens in South Africa, we are following on Twitter. Whatever happens, we are following. If we have an attack in India, we are following because it has become a global village. ICT's interventions have supported the development of young women's capacities and resources and increased women's access to socioeconomic activities and education. There have also been opportunities for sharing of technology globally to accelerate the inclusion of previously marginalized women in development. In my country, we have even put it in the constitution. You cannot do anything for the people without the people. You actually must engage them, even us as members of parliament. We don't just wake up and decide what to put up uh, an ICT hub. We have to actually involve the people and ensure that you work with them. Technology provides a means to accelerate the achievement of gender equality through women empowerment. For instance, Mobile banking ventures facilitate women's entrepreneurship. I'll tell you in Kenya, out of 10 small businesses, eight will be most likely be run by women. That includes the young women and the older women. In Kenya, for instance, M-Pesa, which is a global phenomenon, is the most popular mobile banking service that allows users to transfer or store money through their mobile phones. This improved access to financial services for most of the population of the country, particularly women who are the most excluded from formal banking because they don't have IDs, the, the husbands won't let them use their IDs. And if you use their IDs, they will want to access your money when you shouldn't. This now is actually very safe and secure to be able to run your business very comfortably. Using M-Pesa, it enables women and other users in remote areas to conduct financial transactions safely and easily and promotes financial independence, which is the necessary step in the empowerment of women. There have been several challenges though in the innovation of solutions that benefit women, which governments and non-government organizations and stakeholders should work to address, including one, limited awareness and investment in innovation that target women needs, gender blind approaches to innovation without uh, consider using gender eyes to look at it and a representation of women and innovators and and, in, and entrepreneurs uh, this cut across i mean even us in parliament we have not even achieved our desired 30 percent in parliament even today that cuts across in academia it cuts across in the ict uh, world it cuts across in the ministry of information and technology that there are not many people who are looking at these things with gender lens as women's who women who are practitioners and finally perception of low rewards for investing in innovation for women they don't look to be attractive to innovators to actually include women on the table because they don't look like they would pay as much if it were to be used by other users my final section i'll look at what can we do do we just complain that it's not working no we still have recommendations that we can put across that will help us to achieve what we need to achieve. For technology to empower women socially, specifically with regard to GBV and economically, one, there should be concerted efforts by relevant stakeholders to ensure that young women are digitally literate, the devices are affordable and are easy to access. This I'll give even from my own personal experience as a member of parliament. I represent 90,000 voters, but I'll tell you, I have very specific programs that target women because I am a woman. I understand better. So I will have a, a, a nice city hub and I will always have a quota that targets women so that we pull as many as possible to be on the table because the more we have, then we'll be able to, de to disseminate this information. Two, 
young women should be supported to make use of technology to report and to create awareness on social media platforms on various issues affecting them, such as alerting security officials to trafficking, exploitation, and conduct of harmful practices, such as child early and forced marriages and female genital mutilation. I know we have the normal online platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, but in Kenya, we have also had forums that are specific. In fact, you'll get people who will give you just a number that you report to uh, anonymously. Because when you put it on Twitter, then your name is out there. We have had cases where someone has put it out on Twitter, and instead of even uh, getting sympathy or the necessary help, they get more victimized and they're actually bullied more. Because at the end of the day, how we have been dealing with the violence against women is that the woman is always the bad one. So it is our, our de desire that we have many anonymous uh, online platforms that allow women to easily report these issues. Government should focus on developing markets for innovations that advance women empowerment. I know my government has tried uh, in Kenya. Where we were 10 years ago is not where we are today. We have specific packages that include even giving uh, uh, pro uh, financial assistance to startups for young women to actually be able to catch up with the others that have been in the field. Young women as end users of tech related solutions, both socially and economically, should be involved in their development to ensure there is a buy in of technology and that is relevant to their circumstances. Uh, second, last, governments and other relevant stakeholders should continuously invest and maintain tech related solutions to ensure their relevance over time and the sustainability of the solutions. Technology is not static, it keeps changing. So, as government, like I would say in my country, we have a specific ministry for ICT. We have another specific ministry for youth and women. There has to be a correlation and an annexure where these two meet. Whatever products are to be done for women, the ICT ministry will, will be better to consult the youth ministry to be able to give the specific need areas and how to approach it. And finally, with regard to gender-based violence, technology should be used to reinforce existing conventional approaches such as guaranteeing that trained personnel and professionals can support survivors of gender-based violence and ensuring that there is an effective ecosystem for support available to the survivors. Because what we have seen, even after a survivor goes through GBV, the victimization, the stigma does not end. There usually has to be a continuous support. And this now links to even the issue of mental health that we is a global phenomenon. And we actually have to have a support that we ensure there's a smooth transition from being a survivor to actually starting up and actually standing on your feet. So uh, I want to end it there, if you allow me. And uh, I, I apologize, I was not able to put up the banner for CWP. I, we are on recess and we are working from the village and we are also trying to actually get the village to have technology. So I'll rest it there and thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Honorable. Let, let us put our hands together for Honorable um, Martha Wanjiku's uh, presentation to us. Thank you. Let us put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, that was a mouthful. And I don't want to repeat what she has said, but her presentation was exactly on exploring means of supporting women, that is young women, to engage socially with special emphasis to GBV, economically to foster development in their communities through digital technology. And the Honorable uh, uh, Martha has emphasized the issue of the support that is supposed to be given to young women. The issues of the harmful practices, they differ from one country to another, and we need to engage on research as young women so that you get to know what exactly is happening from one country to another. How are things 
being done um, in Kenya and what is happening in South Africa, what is happening in India, the vulnerability of the women and young women in particular. Thank you so much. And what needs to be done, the prosecution of the perpetrators is key in the presentation. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Martha. Now let us uh, take the message of support. Uh, the message of support uh, will be done by the young male MP, Honorable Hadebe. There was an instance where I was informed that he could not make it, but somebody else also told me now that uh, uh, Honorable Hadebe has managed to 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 connect over to you honorable hadebe thank you so much uh, director and uh, thank you honorable wangari for setting the tone for this young women's parliament um well done um honorable chair allow me to take this opportunity and greet all the participants this morning who are part of this young women's parliament um the grade 10 to grade 12 uh, young women learners in all six districts, the MPLs, um, Eastern Cape women MPs, members of the executive, uh, government entities, uh, business fraternities, traditional leaders, and all protocol observed. Um, program director, my task uh, this morning is very simple and easy. I've been asked- uh, ex Excuse me, excuse me, Honorable Hadebe. As Honorable Hadebe is making his presentation, I'll request Honorable Gaia uh, together with our new speaker for the day to come closer to the podium because immediately after Honorable Hadebe has spoken, I'll hand over to the young speaker of the day together with Honorable Gaia. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Hadebe. You may proceed. Now, thanks, uh, Program Director. I was saying my task is very simple and easy this morning. Um, I've been asked to give a message of support on behalf of the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. Um, Honorable Chair, it is a well-known fact that the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. The South Africa we want is a country where all its inhabitants are able to live their lives with dignity and freedom, where the vulnerable and marginalized are protected by our constitution and the Bill of Rights. As South Africans, we have set ourselves a cause from which we will not falter. We therefore encourage all communities to reclaim our society from the clashes of violence and homophobia. Honorable Chaperson, for generations, Black women in particular have carried the greatest burden of apartheid dispossession and deliberate underdevelopment. Sadly, that the legacy continues and it is worsened by the dire economic situation that our country finds itself in. It is worth noting that our government understands that the economic freedom of women is central to the fight against the gender-based violence because gender-based violence is mainly caused by the gender economic inequalities. Having said that, it is equally important to note that the challenges at hand are not insurmountable. Through its portfolio committees on women and youth and other related committees, the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa is playing a pivotal role in empowering businesses led by women to ensure that they are self-sustainable. Honorable Chairperson, the task at hand may seem inexhaustible, but if, we, if all stakeholders work together, we can explore ways to curb gender inequality, which result in gender-based violence. The need to strengthen police justice system and civil society regarding their collaboration in this regard, it's more critical, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic 
as gender-based violent cases increased during the lockdown in our country. The Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, through its committees, have tabled considerable pieces of legislation, such as, to mention but few, the Criminal Procedure Amendment Bill, Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Bill, and the Criminal and Related Matters Amendment Bill, the Domestic Violence and Amendment Bill and Children's Amendment Bill. The primary objectives of the above bill, as stated, is to ensure the fight against the gender-based violence. Chair, we have called for 2020 to 2030 to be declared as a decade for African women financial inclusion by the African Union, focusing especially on women's entrepreneurship. We are also unequivocally calling for South Africa to step up its national and continental mobilization efforts to raise awareness about the call of eradication of gender-based violence. It is worth noting that gender-based violence is a persistent sketch that is deeply ingrained not only in South Africa but worldwide. The country should continue to support commitment, committed individuals, organizations, churches, including all role players in their relentless fight against the gender-based violence in all our societies. Honorable Chairperson, as much as our economy is in crisis, we are, no, we are by no means powerless. The government, together with partners in business, labor, in community, uh -huh. Uh -huh. to restore uh -uh, dismiss. and create economic opportunities, especially for women and youth. In 2020, uh -huh. the government established what we call a solidarity fund to support the fight against gender-based violence. At the time of its establishment, the Sol solidarity fund approved 17 million project to expand sheltering services and to support the network of Tutu Zelani care centers. At the launch of the Solidarity Fund, the President, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa said, and I quote, the unacceptable high levels of gender-based violence and femicide in South Africa are a blight on our national conscience and a betrayal of our constitutional order for which so many fought and for which so many have gave their lives, close quote. Chairperson, it is worth reminding ourselves that the generation of 1956 mobilized, organized, and stood firm in their demands for the right to be respected. It is not a secret that the government want to see women's full empowerment achieved. The government will spend no effort until the country's women, children are safe, can live, work, play freely, in their rights must be defended. With those few words and on behalf of the Republic of South Africa, we wish you well in your deliberation. We hope that your deliberation will be able to craft and pave a way forward as per your topic on how to meaningfully and practically supporting young women in their fight against gender-based violence. And lastly, what should be your tangible program of action to economically foster the development of young women in our country through digital technology. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe. Uh, let us put our hands together for Honorable Hadebe's presentation. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe, for the support. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe, for the support. Let me now hand over to the Honorable uh, Gaia, as well as the, the speaker of the day, to preside. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs. We are now going or rather we have come to the end of the first phase of the program we are now going to call on the sergeant at arms as well as the procession to enter the chamber thank you very much we request that we all remain muted with all our cameras switched off
over to you, Sergeant at Arms. And thank you, Sergeant. I'm still ringing the bell and setting the forum. Thank you. There is no voice. The Surgeon of Arms is still checking the quorum. Good morning, honorable members. This is the Sergeant at Arms, Lusaka Nyanungu. All rise, order, Madam Speaker. There will now be an opportunity for a silent prayer or meditation. Thank you. You may all be seated. Honorable Premier, as it is protocol before I formally take the seat, and preside over this hybrid house setting. Let me formally recognize your presence, the presence of other MECs, members of legislature, and our honored guests, the young women parliamentarians. I also wish to express a word of welcome to the members of the parliament, Ms. Marta Manjuku and Mr. Hadebe, Mr. Hadebe from the National Assembly. Thank you for your presence and your ongoing support shown for our programs. Before we commence with the business of the day, may I once again take this opportunity to remind the House of the Ground Rules that will assist in facilitating our hybrid sitting. Members and guests are reminded that this is a formal sitting of the legislature, and therefore all the standing rules of the legislature applies. We have adopted the rules for the virtual and or a hybrid house sitting and committee meetings. But those must be, okay. And therefore all the rules of the legislature applies. We have adopted the rules for the virtual and hybrid house sitting and committee meetings. But those must be regarded as the supplementary to the existing standing rules. Members are requested to keep all microphones on mute when not speaking, as this helps to prevent noise, echo, and disruptions from the background noise around you. Members must keep their cell phones and other devices on silent. Kindly indicate to the speaker via a message when you want to be recognized for a comment or query by making use for the chat box. 
for recognition by the speaker to speak. This also applies if you want to raise a point of order or question of privilege. Members who are in the chamber will have the microphone brought to them when they are recognized by the presiding officer. Members are requested to keep their videos on so that we are able to identify the person who is in the chamber. As a word of advice, members are requested to always check the appropriateness of background for their videos and also to dress decently. Honorable members, are there any notices of motion? Yes, Madam Speaker. Go ahead, Chief Wolf. Madam Speaker, I move without notice in terms of Rule 130 that despite the provisions of the standing rules of procedure of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, that the House approves the change on starting times of this House of the 25th of August to be 5 past 10. I so move. I put the motion. Agreed. 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 Thank you, Honorable Member. Agreed. As, the per as per the decision of a multi-party whips committee, we will not have any member's statement today. We will therefore proceed with the business for the day. I will ask Secretary Ms. Simamkele Nonzama to read the first subject matter for discussion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Draft resolution, exploring means of supporting young women to engage socially with special emphasis to GBV, economically to foster development in their communities through digital technology. Thank you, Honorable Member. I will now call upon the Honorable Chief of Ms. Yomelela Kekwa to introduce the debate. Honorable Speaker, I, Yomelela Kregwa, the Chief Whip of the Eastern Cape Legislature Young Women's Parliament, move without notice that the House note that South Africa is said to have the highest statistics of gender-based violence in the world, including rape and domestic violence. The increase in these statistics are mainly caused because by the inequality in gender and gender power. Our communities expect that when you are female or male, you are expected to act in a certain manner. And males are taught that they are, have the upper, man, upper hand over women. And when women are not being submissive, this unruly behavior of gender-based violence then takes place. In the past years, we have lost our sisters in the hands of men who have claimed to love them, who they found comfort and security in. Also note that the recent World Group Systematic Country Diagnostic for South Africa has reported that most of South Africa's landscape also includes townships and informal settlements, which makes a large underdevelopment amount of communities. In these communities, the majority of, set of the settlers are women who have ran away from their abusers. Recognize that in the year 2019-2020, 2,695 women were murdered in South Africa. That amounts to one woman murdered every three hours, which is also five times the global average. These women have lost their lives unwillingly to the hands of men. 51% of women in South Africa say that they have experienced gender-based violence. But out of that number, 20% only have reported their cases and only 5% have had successful cases. The rest of those women have never reported the gender-based violence cases and they feared for their lives. Further recognize that according to the Living Conditions Survey, approximately 40% of South Africans were living below the upper boundary poverty line. The upper bound poverty line means that each person
person in a household should earn at least 1,227 per month. 52.2% of women fall below this line as compared to 46.1% of men. The overpopulation, the overall population living below the living below the poverty line in 2021 is 13.7%. The rate of women unemployment is higher than the rate of men unemployment. This shows how gender inequality and gender roles are dominating our country. I urge I the Department of Justice and Constitutional and Development and the Department of Environmental Affairs to work with the young women by supporting them socially to engage with their communities and teach them about their rights, their responsibilities, and the inequality in gender. This department should help these young women to emphasize gender-based violence using digital technology and spread the awareness in their communities. The teaching about applications such as the U Safe U app should be prioritized as they help communities decrease these rates and statistics of gender-based violence. I further urge the Department of Economic Development and Ministry of Finance, together with the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, to work with us as the young women economically to force the development within our communities through digital technology, as this will increase affordability and empower the users of technology more. As we are in the fourth industrial revolution, where digital technology is dominating, the development of our community via the digital technology can help our country's economy and decrease the poverty rates, as many young people will want to be involved in building applications and websites to teach about gender-based violence. I so move. Thank you, Honorable Bema. I put the motion. I will then invite honorable members to take the podium according to the speaker's list. All members are allocated eight minutes for the speech. I now call on the Democratic Alliance to take the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Greetings to the greetings to our Honorable Speaker, our, our Honorable Premier, and our Honorable Members here with us on this very special day. It is a great honor and gratitude that I, Honorable Filita of the Dean, get this opportunity to deliver to you all an, an educational speech under the topic, Exploring Means of Supporting Young Women to Engage Socially with Special Emphasis to GPV, Economically to, to Foster Development in Their Communities Through Digital, digital Technology. Sorry. Gender-based violence, GPV, is the violent, unfair, unlawful, and inferior treatment directed against a person, in most cases a female, because of that person's gender. It is caused by many factors including sexism, prejudice, bias, and gender power imbalances like patriarchy, directly or indirectly perpetrated, in most cases by a male to a female. It is perpetrated in many forms including child marriages, female genital mutilation, sex trafficking and sex slavery, physical, emotional and sexual violence, and so forth. It is a global pandemic that affects one in five women worldwide in their lifetime. According to surge panel spatial reports, our country, South Africa, has the highest GPV statistics worldwide with about 51% of SA women claiming to have experienced it and about 76% of SA men confessing to have perpetrated it in their lifetime. According to South African Police Services, SAPS, there have been 42,289 cases of rape and 7,749 cases of sexual assault reported mostly by women in the year 2019 to the year 2020, amid under a huge underreporting of these cases. According to search panel Global Risk Insights, more than 2,700 
700 SA women have been brutally murdered as a result of GBV since the year 2000, as intimate femicide as five times the global average. GBV has also been named a pandemic in a pandemic since its, stat in its statistics have gra devastatingly gradually increased due to the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown regulations in 2020, where women were trapped inside houses with their abusers making them vulnerable and easily targeted and victimized to GPV by their perpetrators. According to Search Panel News 24, some of these GPV cases towards women and children includes, number one, an LLB final year student, student by the name Dositelam Tembini, who was mercilessly murdered and butchered by her boyfriend. Number two, a woman in the University of Porter by the name of, oh, sorry. Next up. By the name of Nositelo, who was mercilessly murdered and tortured by her boyfriend. Number three, a woman in the University of Cape Town by the name of Uyenam Pujwana, who was raped by, at a post office by a male employee there. Number four, a woman who was raped and murdered by her estranged husband five years ago. South African women have been greatly undermined in both society and economy. This is because society has labeled us to be less intelligent, deserving, stronger and talented than men. This undermining then deprives us the opportunity of getting good, stable, well-paying and worthy jobs, which poses as a great barrier to SA's, eco SA's economic development. As Tatum Kulu Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, Freedom cannot be achieved Three minutes left, honorable member. from all forms of oppression. This undermining also deprives us our basic rights, one of which states that no person shall be unfairly discriminated against on the grounds of race, gender, sex, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscience, belief, culture or language. The South African government is trying to find solutions to GBV leading to the underdevelopment of our economy. And digital transformation is the solution. Digital technological development is the overall process of invention, innovation, diffusion and te of technology throughout industries and economy, which mainly aims at better improving, modernizing and developing a country and its people. The implementation and development of digital technology in South Africa can help be as means of survival from GBV to our women, especially young women. It can help socially by posing as a safety tool to assist and educate women to prevent and or stop its occurrence. This can be done by number one, providing applications, apps, which help as a communication medium to, in, to educate women about their rights, GPV, how it violates them, how risky it is, how it affects their lives and steps they can take to end or prevent it. Number two, providing virtual safe spaces where women can freely and safely anonymously report GPV cases to professional safety, law and order insurers. Number three, developing support programs which help provide, which help support and empower GPV victims and women, both financially and healthcare wise, to escape it. They can ensure that women countrywide have access to these digital technological safety tools by providing them with technological appliances such as cell phones, which they can use, which they can use to access. One minute left, honorable member. Okay, thank you which they can use to assess this digital technology, technological education and assistance to, regarding GBV. Digital technology can also provide um, financial and economic freedom to, can also provide financial and economic freedom to women, especially young women by providing both women and men with equal job opportunities with, they can help bridge the gender unemployment inequality in SA, as SA currently has about 29% of unemployed women as against 24% of unemployed men. These job opportunities will bring about financial freedom and independence to these women and both our economy. I urge our country to take action to abolish GPV. Our women are dying, our country is bleeding, our children are starving. This is a wake up call urging all citizens to take effective action against GPV. Watinda Bafazi, Watinda Mbokoto. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I invite Honorable Emile Mangesana from EFF?
Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, this is Emishle Magisana. Um, greetings to Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, and Honorable Members, respectively. Um, basically, um, we are here under the motion that says exploring means of supporting young women to engage socially with special emphasis to GBV economical to foster development in their communities through digital technology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we all need to be aware of what causes gender-based violence. Um, gender-based violence is mainly caused by um, beliefs and stereotypes that we draw up with as kids, mainly that um, men or let's say boys are superior to us because they can be able to do things that we can't do because they are they are told to be stronger than us because they watch after ships and other stuff and girls are taught how to cook instead. Um, as the AFF, we've mainly came up with solutions that do not only work through digital technology, but can also be used um, socially, speaking to people, face-to-face -face contact. Um, we have came up with an idea of grooming um, young boys and girls at an early stage, teaching them about gender-based violence so that they can be aware of the gender-based violence that is going on inventedly in our country. Gender-based violence is a global pandemic and we all need to work together to be able to solve it. We have thought of self online self-defense classes that are going to be able to help um, young women to be able to defend themselves. As we all know that there is a high rate of gender-based violence in South Africa. We have already heard of the University of Fort Helena, Nosotelo, who was murdered by her boyfriend which is a totally sad thing to ever happen to any woman. We do not wish that to any woman. Um, we have also came up with an idea of that maybe the government, um, sorry, we urge the government to give us a certain force or let's say rather a department of gender-based violence. That department is going to only specialize in the gender-based violence cases. It is going to help in uh, taking stand for women who have cases of gender-based violence. And that department can also help us by going through each and every community in rural areas whereby we stay with elders, elderly people who don't know what gender-based violence is and are needed to be taught about this gender-based violence that is occurring in our country and is slowly um, taking over and dominating in South Africa. In fact, in the entire world, this gender-based the this gender-based developed, uh, this gender-based violence um, department is going to help us uh, teach these people, and it must also specialize in school so that learners can be aware of this at an early stage and be able to understand that each gender is equal. There is no gender superior than other, or there is no gender um, having superior motives than other. When we, what this department could also um, help us with by having an app to detect the victim's location that is going to help uh, women to be able con to contact with the department of people because we all know that this department is needed as we know, all know that the police aren't um able to take to take care of these cases at an early stage but instead um have other bigger cases to take care of we all know that gender-based violence is mainly against women because um as our as our um, Minister of Police stated last week that there's been a high rate of gender Two minutes left, Honorable Member. There's been a high case of sexual um, violence to women, the rate which has gone up by 74.2% since the pandemic. We urge, as the AFF, we urge the government to give people jobs, to give them satisfies, because we all know that this high rate of gender-based violence started interesting the time when people lost their jobs during the lockdown pandemic. So we ask the government to give people opportunities to jobs so that they can stay occupied and be able um, to be busy during um, their time. Because we all know that there are thousands of people roaming around the streets who are looking for people whom they can take advantage of. What we also need is the, um, the Department of Police the Department of Police, or rather, let's say, the Department of Justice in South Africa, to look mainly into the accused people of gender-based violence, or let's say, the accused people of sexual abuse. Those people must be, those cases must be treated equally to murder, because raping another woman is a wrong thing. They must be treated like murder, and those people should be given um, uh, life sentences with no parole. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I say that we must work together as a country uh, because um, gender-based violence is not only the responsibility of the government, but the responsibility of each and every human being out there on the earth. So we need to, uh, to work together so that we can find a solution for this gender-based violence. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I invite Honorable Mananga from UTM? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'd love to greet Madam Speaker, our Sergeant of Arms, and our Premier. Before I start, I'd love to pass some condolences and love and light to most Elu's family that was married by her, <clears throat> her boyfriend. It is said that as South African young women, we are facing uh, this pandemic, COVID-19, this pandemic, gender-based violence. It is not. It, it is not easy for us to 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 do things because of we are told that we we are told that things that we want to do as women must be done by men, of which it's not supposed to be that way. Lula, we are facing things that we cannot talk to our parents about. I, for one, say that our parents should take care of our issues. Because we cannot talk to others and this. It begins at home. If our plan and our engine, you cannot get it right. For me to go outside means the easy. I have to have someone and this African detect and I. At schools, we're facing children who who, who are happy by the right and you, you, you tend to ask yourself that. How can you be happy at school that time? Abanye, they are very tired that I can't do this anymore. But when you enjoy coming to school, you never absent to school. Those are the children you have to look down on. But and what's happening in Bawe? Why are you always active? Why are you like this? The reason why they're like that is because they're facing issues at home that whenever they, they have to go engineer after school, they, they feel like crying if they don't want to go home because Abazal Babo, they fighting. Madam Speaker, may you please request the Honourable Member to switch on the camera and the microphone, unmute please. Can you switch on the camera and your microphone, microphone unmute? Unmute your microphone, ma'am. Unmuted. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Sorry for that. Uh, I, uh, sorry for that. Two minutes left, Honourable Member. As I was saying that we have to get the basics from home. We have, uh, I plead our government to employ psychologists that are not employed and are graduates supposed to, to go to school. Ah, and the biopangel is going to talk to the children that Abanga was a tetan abandoned. It's not easy for us. We're facing Abazali who cannot live in relationships because of as the Bagwazi manner they cannot get. They are they are graduate they are graduated but Abakumani is the It's for the government to make sure that each and every graduate in South Africa, a Christian in every way is employed because if you have a man who provides for you and every day to egg rape at doing everything, you cannot just be that man because of it's the influence that the children are growing up on. But from what they feel like it's good for their parents and they carry on doing that thing. So I plead our government to please employ a psychologist who whatever teachers that are not employed so that we can deal with these issues. In the community, we're facing a society that is judgmental. We, 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 do not, we, we cannot do things as our way because we're facing people who are, who are judging us. We've got Abandana who grow from different backgrounds. Among the now, you, you never bought things they wanted before. Now, they, they're using... One it. minute left, Honorable Member. We, we've got children who are prostitutes out there. It's not our place to judge prostitutes because they're trying to get what they do not have using what they have. And we are forced to use things. We are forced to use things we have in order for us to get what we are about to ask. I'm feeling young women of South Africa to never ever again be victim of what of having to use what you have in order for you to get what you don't have. That time you are graduated. It's our time to change the way we live. It's 
for us to decide our future. It's very too late for us to participate in our daughter. We cannot, we can never leave Sinyamezele because they be using the words that I as I as provided. It's never going to be like that. Young women of today are going to be the better people of tomorrow. We are going to groom ourselves to better people of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I invite Honorable Mkondweni Sinalo from ATM? Okay. Um, greetings to all members of parliament and all protocol of the In light of Mama Charles Matakel's fearlessness as a religious leader in political activism, a god fearing woman who managed to advance opportunities for Africans in the previous disadvantaged community shows that she was a servant leader who constantly seeks to empower, enable, and transform the lives of South Africans. As compared to the current political leaders questioning, ridiculing, and disencouraging religious leaders, in particular Christians and other faith based organizations in the forefront of redressing political imbalances affecting the economy and contributing to African moral decay. So such honorable um, lectures as Mama Tori Mashtag awaken the zeal of social and political activists who are religious leaders facing such dismissive perspective. As a religious and political activist, she acknowledges uh, the fact that politics is an instrumental system designed to create ideal socio-economic patterns informing healthy religious relationships which make up holistically healthy and functional communities. Moving right along, a critical component of social and economic development of women, both in the digital citizen and the traditional economy, is prevention and response to gender-based violence, as this is a multi multifaceted economic issue. Why? It is because gender-based violence creates barriers for women, economic empowerment, growth, and social participation of women. A glaring truth is that, is that women can hard participate in the economy because gender-based violence prevents women from leaving their homes to and from work. They also disrupt required work functions and productivity. Thus, women are most subjected to incompetency and fragility in the world of work. Now, compounding this is the COVID-19 pandemic, which has increased the rate of gender-based violence and caused global economic hardship. For women to achieve sustainable advancement, there needs to be adequate enforcement and implementation of existing rules that prohibit gender-based violence in all of its forms. The digital division in this case might be one of the solutions to accommodate a significant number of women participating economically through technology so as to foster development in their community. Three minutes left, honorable member. Okay, the following are the recommendations of exploring means in supporting young women. Education, education systems should be crafted in a skill-based way that assists the ever-expanding digital world. Introduction of digital design that make business models improve to help overcome hurdles to participation by training female developers. Um, critically scrutinize and redress laws that are in conflict with the norms, values, principles that inform moral regeneration in the African society, like Koreanji, which seeks to confuse families and perpetuate gender based violence. In a society, Currently overburdened by cases of gender-based violence, we cannot afford to condone such laws which exploit women as the incubators and bearers of the next generation. So I propose that introduction of capital-based punishment towards gender-based violence to the gender to be implemented. To also improve the allocation of resources in order to make informed decisions about how private resources should be allocated 
and to, to ensure that enough financial resources are directed towards understanding the issue of violence. Policy makers need to have scientific information about the initial size of, of the problem. The concept of injury uh, causing is frequently used in health economics and has been used to estimate the economic impact of particular health concerns within a population by measuring economic costs and consequences of violence. Policymakers can be better informed over the circulation of resource allocation across various social, environmental, and economic priorities, as well as within efforts to address gender based violence. So, um, also to, to involve boys. One minute left, Honorable Member. In the early, uh, in their early stages, so that they can understand uh, that uh, women and, bo and boys are equal. Um, to strengthen laws against cyberbullying in the digital world, deliberately engage men and boys in women's empowerment programs, not only for support services. To educate girls, uh, to strengthen self-esteem, and also introduce transformative practices to unify girls and boys. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I now invite Ongame Ngumla, Honorable Ongame Ngumla from FF Plus. <laughs> Greetings, Honorable Members. Here positioned before you is Ongame Ngumla, a grade 10 learner from Johnson Mongoza Senior Secondary School. I'll be representing the Freedom Front Plus. Firstly, what is gender-based violence? It refers to an harmful act Directed to an individual, directed to an individual based on their gender. Gender-based violence is a serious violation of human rights and a life-threatening or even a protection issue. It is estimated that one in three women will experience sexual or physical violence in their lifetime. Gender-based violence can be physical, sexual, emotional, financial, or even structural, and can be perpetrated by strangers, intimate partners, uh, acquaintances, or even institutions. Most interpersonal gender-based violence are committed by men against women. Uh, under gender-based violence, we have both, which is known as violence against women and girls. Gender-based violence is disproportionately directed to women and girls. For this reason, you may find some definition use of gender-based violence and violence against women and girls interchangeably. And in this article, we mainly focus on violence against women and girls. We have the gender-based violence against LGBT club which are lesbians, gen, uh, gays, bisexual, and transgenders. The people we mostly judge, the people we mostly judge for choosing their own gender. We even have intimate partner violence, which is known as IPV. It is the most common form of gender-based violence. It includes physical and sexual emotional controlling behavior by a current or a former intimate partner. Gender-based violence in rural areas Especially a lot of gender-based violence go unreported. Neighbors can hear cries of a mother or a child, but just because they are told they were rooted that if you hear something, you must mind your own business. We have gender-based violence in South Africa. Society free of gender-based violence do not exist. In South Africa, there is no exception. It is evident South Africa particularly high rate of gender-based violence, including violence against women and girls. Whilst people of all genders perpetrate and experience intimate partner violence and sexual violence, men are most often the perpetrators. Most, more than half of all women murdered, 56% in 2009 were killed by intimate male partner. Drivers of gender-based violence. We have patriarchy, which is a party where men are told that they have more power than women, which is not true. We have unemployment. We have unemployment, which is the reason a uh, high, high rate of unemployment of women is the rate. We have background where men has anger issues. And what, first, what is 
Digital technology. Uh, digitalized data is recorded to binary code as permutation of binary digits zero and one, which means the receptional change of binary digits, which means uh, also called transverse digits. This technology allows huge level of info patterned on small storage devices that can be simply spread and conveyed. We have websites, smartphones, video streaming, and geolocation. Uh, as a member of the front class, I wish to eliminate some of the additional measures that I urge to be taken. I urge you overhaul and, moder and modernize that National Register of Gender-Based Violence Offenders provided for the sexual offense get to ensure it is effective. Register well it all tells of men who violate women. I urge the parliament to consider amending legislation to make the register public. What are we doing now? Do you think what are we doing is enough? I don't think so. You're all probably wondering why. Because if it was enough, there wouldn't be women dying every day, being killed by men who are supposed to protect us. The men who are antagonizing us, the men who are perpetrating us are the ones who are supposed to be protecting us, making sure that we are safe. Just last year, the time we were facing- Three minutes left, honorable member. COVID-19 between 24.6% or 25.2% of women dying within the month June or November. About eight women dying every day in, in, in South Africa. Example, Leandra Jachel, Jenny Kamalo, Ayaka Gianna, and her little siblings. Not so long ago, just this month, this year, women died such as Nostello, not to mention Slindokuta, who was brutally killed by her boyfriend who got out of jail and only with a 500 rand bail. Only 500 bail, which means that Slindokuta's life costed 500. Is that what our life cost? I don't think so. It was unfair only to think that she was the only child to her mother. Do you imagine the pain that that mother is going through? What are we doing about this? So completely, what's the difference? Uh, so, which one do you prefer? Honorable Speaker, can we please ask everybody else to mute? Thank you. We want women dying every day, not to mention graduates that dies before even doing something. Is that what we want to our country? I think we should deal with it for the next generation. We should groom our children to know that women are building this country. We're nothing without women. So we should them. And I think that's something we really have to do with it. As a member of Freedom Front Plus, I come with these ideas, hoping that you will take them to mind. I so thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I invite Honorable Onele Mguni from ANC? Onele, 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 Onele. onele. A great girl is a great dream. Honorable speaker, honorable members. COVID-19 and other related containments have triggered a shadow pandemic of gender-based violence. This global scourge threatens the safety and the well-being of millions of girls and women. Domestic violence reports have increased three to fold in many countries, and since most domestic violence goes unreported, the scope of the problem is likely to be much greater. This violence may be physical, psychological, economical, and also sexual. It happens at home, on the streets, and massively increasing online. While digital technology can bring huge advantages, there is also no doubt that it can also facilitate a massive amount of violence. Honorable, honorable, women and girls are likely to be targets of this. 
Honorable, Honorable Mguni, can you be excused for a moment? There's an error. May I invite Mkondweni Sinal, Honorable Mkondweni Sinal from ATM? Madam Speaker, Ministers, Cabinet Colleagues, Department of Education, and Honorable Members, I am addressed as Mkondweni Sinal, a student of grade 10 from Samuel Beusine Secondary School. I will represent the African Transformation Movement. Our topic is exploring means of supporting young women in social special access to gender based violence, economically supported development in their community, health technology. It's not often you get to explore our definitions to entrench social cultural problems. To the extent that it becomes a formal debate as well with such arguments and rebuttals. The government is required to provide prevention and safety under constitutional framework, therefore, they are complicit in perpetrating GPV. Firstly, gender based violence is deeply rooted in, in discriminatory cultural belief attitudes that perpetrate inequality and powerlessness, in particular, of women and girls. Where we come from in Joker, we have several major issues due to GPV, and to name a few, we have health problems. Where school attendance in my community is, where school attendance in my community is affected by limited sanitary power. Young women, young girls get mobbed in schools because they do not know anything about menstrual cycles, so they just have to go through it. Education issues result to drop out because of exposure to harassment at school through touching and negative comments on how girls Girls dress. They face sexual abuse at school by both by boys, children, and teachers who benefit money, gifts, marks to test and examination. On safety issues, the majority of reported rape cases are neglected in some places like police stations, reasons being no, ra no rape kits to steadily attend such incidents, and all these cases run cold. The social development government grants are misdirected to other needs that are not actually related to the beneficiary. Young girls encounter abuse in foster homes and are often forced in prostitution to older men so they can bring income. There are six types of gender based violence, which are violence against LGBTI people, violence against women and girls, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, sexual violence, and indirect violence. Both women and men experience gender-based violence, but the majority of victims are women and girls. Gender-based violence and violence against women and girls are terms that are often used interchangeably, as it has been widely acknowledged that most gender-based violence is inflicted on women and girls by men. However, using the gender-based aspect is important as it highlights the fact that many forms of gender-based violence are rooted in power inequality between men and women. COVID-19 and other related containment measures have been a standard pandemic of gender based and this global south threatens the safety and well-being of millions of girls and women. Domestic violence has increased threefold in many countries, and this violence may be physical, sexual, psychological, economic. Three minutes left, honorable member. Online. In addition of to the online abuse, violence. While digital techniques can include advantages, there is no doubt that also facilitate violence. Reasons being, women and girls are more likely to be online targets in online violence, such as physical threats, sexual harassment, bullying, stalking, sex trolling, and exploitation. As Joe Kabi are struggling with internet in school because we can't go our schoolwork and during the pandemic, we were advised that we would be learning online, but we could not because of internet and connectivity. Our challenge is that the government only has three days on the unemployment relief scheme grants as a result of school children not attending school and go first to reduce grants from time. And the proposed solution is what I just said above that technology solutions must be upon the extensive and solid foundation of ethical standards and protocols and privacy standards. There are numerous ways technology can be used as a possible good, and we have examples of how digital apps and 
digital platforms and apps can be used to fight against violence and promote gender inequality. There are many ways technology can be used, but we'll be focusing on the following. Firstly, that technology for prevention has a mobile app, which is basically that you can map real-time data from users to provide public information. Secondly, as a peer. Thirdly, as a safe space. Fourthly, as a safeguard. Fifth, as a guide. And lastly, as a response. Who must have internet Wi-Fi so that nearby young women would have access to find out if they have problems both for school work and for social abuse. Having to call for help in my community is a huge problem, as all police stations are very far as well as hospitals. And we must. One minute left, honorable member. Finding the right. When we look at our challenges, sexism and gender inequality, we have come up with a solution of gender bending where we should have a range of awareness to young women about our rights and we can use social media like Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp to raise social issues and get the support from women on a daily basis. Some programs have structured participatory activities that guide um, the examination of gender norms and their relationship to power inequality, violence, and other harmful behavior. These programs work with multiple stakeholders across the socio-ecological spectrum and multiple sectors and often at a small scale. We need to replicate successful and ensure the sustaining of norm changes as pilot collective impact programs. As the ATM, we support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable <laughs> Member. <laughs> May I invite Honorable Onelem Guni from ANC? A great guest is a great dreamer. Honorable speaker, honorable members. COVID-19 and other related containments have triggered a shadow pandemic of gender-based violence. This global scourge threatens the safety and the well-being of millions of girls and women. Domestic violence reports have increased three to fold in many countries. And since most domestic violence goes unreported, the scope of the problem is likely to be much greater. This violence may be physical, psychological, economical, and also sexual. It happens at home, on the streets, and massively increasing online. While digital technology can bring huge advantages, there is also no doubt that it can also facilitate a massive amount of violence. Women and girls are most likely to be targets of this online abuse, such as physical threats, bullying, stalking, sex trolling, and exploitation. We have seen this worsen during the COVID-19 pandemic with the increase in the usage of the internet from 50% to 70%. There has been a surge in the non-consensual sharing of images designed to threaten, shame, and control women and girls. And online sexual exploitation and child abuse has reached crisis level, and with girls featuring in most online abuse materials. There is an urgent need to address this online abuse, turn the tables and harness the power of technology as a force for good and for gender-based violence prevention and response. The UNICEF as part of the IDIA is committed to see bold advances to meet this demand. Tools and technology should not expose women and girls to further harm. For instance, a survivor conducting support services online would be at great risk of violence if others could see evidence of these communications on her phone. Technology solutions should build upon the extensive and solid foundation of ethical standards and protocols of the gender-based violence community while meeting digital safety and privacy standards. From Wikipedia.org, a 19-year-old girl named Mkhojan was raped and brutally killed by a 42-year-old post office. Even though our people fought and protested for women's justice, nothing has changed. Our mothers, sisters, and grandmothers are still living in fear of, am I next? For how long will we live in fear of being raped, murdered, or even human trafficked to other countries? We are even scared of our own brothers and fathers, the only people who are supposed to be our support systems. Not forgetting the current issue of, not, sorry, not forgetting the current issue of the brutal murder of the 23-year-old woman, Nostalom Teben. She was raped, beaten, and put inside a suitcase by her boyfriend. The pain of seeing a and young, ambitious woman like that is unbearable. I, so that is why I strongly condemn the circulation of those pictures. She is being violated even though she's, she's already dead. The circulation of her body parts is killing her family. They, they are grieving for their daughter, and yet you are 
digging a grave for them while they are still breathing. My heart is heavy. I am broken. This war directed to our women is putting a strain on my soul. A war by men that should be protecting us. There are numerous ways in which technology can be a force for good, technology for prevention. Tech solutions can raise awareness and mitigate users' risk to violence. For example, Safety Pin is a mobile app that crowdsources and maps real time data users, primarily women and girls, to plan their routes and find safe places to stay. SOS ZA is also a mobile app created by Shomla Dandal to help save a woman under threat immediately to prevent rape or any harm before it even happens. This is the time for stronger action and for us to stand up for our rights. But how can we do that when even women and girls are bringing violence to themselves? Three minutes left, Honorable Member. I say this because we have all heard from Wikipedia.org about a 14-year-old girl, Mufuna Mubanga, who lived at Limbomb. Her story came as a shocking ordeal to every citizen of the country, South Africa. She was brutally beaten by her peers from school. They called her names and that led to her committing suicide. <clears throat> we could support and face violence victims in many ways. For example, we should never say why they didn't she leave. That would drastically lower the self-esteem of the victim. What we should say is, I feel for you. I know what you're going through and I stand by you. Let not the victim suffer emotionally because she has been through a lot already. Discrimination won't help in any way because it may motivate injustice and also discrimination to the victim. We could also support gender-based violence economically. For example, we could use our voices on social media to bring awareness to gender-based violence. Scaling up prevention efforts to address unequal gender power relations as a root cause of gender-based violence. Develop support programs for professionals experiencing second home trauma. Apply for the bringing of gender-based violence clinical services to lower level health facilities, addressing the needs of the children survivors. As women we should be united through this very rough patch. The time for silence on violence has been ended. Kill the violence before it kills you. Hashtag break the silence. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I request a response from the Honorable Member of UNICEF. Honorable members. Good morning. Um, as we remember Nostello, we also remember the individual social and economic context of women and girls. It is so great to hear young women speaking so passionately about the plight of women and girls, but also about the possible solutions that we all have to um, address. This happens also as we grapple with the circumstance of the 23,000 girls in Gauteng, some of them as young as 10, who as, uh, are soon to be teenage mothers. On the reflection, many of these girls may have been raped. Teen mothers are likely to be trapped uh, in a cycle of poverty as they bring the children into this world. As mentioned in this house, national and international instruments are clear. We need to achieve gender equality and, power, and empower all women and girls, and that has to happen soon. And I'm glad that um, as young, young girls and members of this house have made that very clear. They've made clear what they want as young women, and they've made clear what safety means for them, but they've also made clear what it means for them to break the cycle of poverty and to call upon us as adults to uh, provide a response to the challenges that they face. Honorable uh, Wangari mentioned uh, the role of technology. Um, and I mean, what is very clear in South Africa is um, technology is a barrier, yet a great enabler. For all categories of society, girls and women especially, access is quite limited. And yet there have been platforms, there have been uh, content that's developed for women to firstly access services, 
um, and as a mode of uh, breaking the cycle of poverty, but as a, a mode of accessing services that are truly needed by women. This is one of the programs um, that is one of the priorities that the United Nations through Generation Unlimited put very closely as part of the objective. We need to reimagine a better life for these young women. In fact, COVID-19 has really um, showed us how these young women are further marginalized as they are excluded from the participation and as their access during um, COVID-19 has been um, as shown. Um, as, as, as you know, and as it is mentioned, there are a number of platforms that are developed for young women, but accessibility remains an issue. Honorables, um, as a mother to boys, I am not wishing for girls to shrink so that my son can fill the space, but I'm wishing that we remember the structural barriers, which is poverty, which low education and marginalization and inequality that young uh, girls and women face, and that it becomes a barrier for their movement from or transition from school to work. I also want to remind us that at a social level, um, there are a number of areas that we need to be dealing with, particularly expectations of girls and women, um, a male entitlement um, that really put women and girls at risk. But lastly, um, I did not want to take the space. As the UN, we are committed to providing opportunities for youth um, through the Generation Unlimited. This is why we decided that uh, me as an older person should not say much, but this is an opportunity for a young, a vibrant Nombu, so Michelle, who will speak, uh, provide the response, who will speak in the language that uh, girls and women um, understand, who will speak about the context that she exists within, who will speak about what it has meant for her to be a young person at university and what is, it has meant for her to be a young woman who's driven to uh, transit, but also the barriers that push her lower and what is her wish for um, this parliament to consider as we drive um, the apply or the strategy or the interventions and all programming that will enable young women and uh, enable girls to exist in a safer environment, to exist in an environment that provides them with opportunities, but that will also consider the fact that as they move, they should not be very scared of what is happening, but they should be hopeful of the future where all women are empowered and where all women achieve that gender equality and where all that women provide spaces for others to also shine. Uh, over to you, Nombuso, um, and thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, um, uh, Chair, may I go on? Yes, you can go on. Um, I'm not so sure if the house can see me. Um, if I could get an indication, I, I find it quite ironic that uh, one of our discussions today is on uh, digital technology and how it can ad advance communities. But I may have issues of my own with connectivity. So if the house could just indicate if they can see me. Otherwise, I will use an alternative. No, we can't see you, honorable member. All right. Um, what about now? <laughs> yes, we can see you, ma'am. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Tadube, and greetings to all members of parliament, all protocol observed. It's been really interesting uh, listening to the debate this morning and thinking about myself as a young professional and where I would really like to see myself um, in the future. But, you know, it gets difficult to think about the future when you consider the plight that we're faced with as young women in South Africa. I think that central to the discussions today has been really how we merge what is policy or what is the legal framework with what we are doing on the ground, with what can be implemented on the ground. And I think that's the point of discussion that I want to come in with. You know, yeah, since the advent of the constitutional dispensation, South Africa has been alive with possibilities and we have been praised for having a liberal and perhaps the best constitution in the world. 
we have a constitution that is characterized by rights and freedoms, including the right to equality, which includes gender equality. We've got the right to dignity, which also includes bodily integrity, the right to life, which cannot be limited, the right to privacy, the right to freedom of expression, and my personal favorite in this context, the right to freedom and security. And if you look at section 12C of the constitution, it, it, speaks, as, it speaks to freedom and security to include being free from all forms of violence. At this particular point, ladies and gentlemen, we need to take a moment and reflect. Can we really say, can we really say, sorry? Honorable Speaker, may we please ask Ms. Namboso to adjust the camera as she is live on television and we can only see the head. Please adjust the camera, Ms. Namboso. Just a little bit lower down. She's fine now. Am I? It looks better right now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. At this particular point, ladies and gentlemen, thinking about all these rights that we have in terms of the Constitution, we need to take a moment and reflect. Can we really say that women living in South Africa enjoy these constitutional rights and privileges? Can we say the Constitution manifestly, manifestly protects women and girls? Reports show that every day, one or a combination of these rights are violated and that women in South Africa are vulnerable. What then is the point of the supremacy of this constitution? What is the law if it is only said to be observed and not manifestly seen in action? And I think that's been the question of the day. Our problem is not that we do not have enough policies, legal or legislative frameworks. It is that the implementation does not match what is on paper. Our position is to shift from what can be drafted to what must be done on the ground to practically ensure the protections that exist on paper. We have an implementation crisis, but how do we solve that crisis together? Question. The president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, in his forward, femicide in South Africa are exceptionally high and that this is a betrayal of our constitutional order, an order that many fought for and which took us a long time to get to. He maintains that it is shameful that the country be regarded as one of the most unsafe places for women to live. As a young woman myself, vulnerable to this violence, I have a vested interest in finding solutions to our plight. I am interested in what is being done and in how communities are being engaged and behaviors are being changed. I am interested in the prevention strategies that exist and in the unfortunate cases that prevention is not possible. I am interested in how we carry out management. How do we reassure victims and provide support that involves both physical and mental health? How do we address stigmatization and victimization? And how do we achieve justice? How do we ensure that women can be the best versions of themselves and that they can go freely after their dreams and build their careers? Winning this fight requires a concerted effort. It really requires all of us to pull actively together, join hands and say enough is enough. It requires us to act and act now. We need civil society organizations and government to come to this party and really make it worthwhile. Of course, one such organization is UNICEF, and it has embarked on several interventions to ensure that women are safer in South Africa. At UNICEF, we care about the best interests of the child, and that includes shielding children from harm, including violence. It is against this background that we have embarked on several programs and interventions that are in line with this mandate. And these interventions include, number one, UNICEF was part of the development of the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, which really is the cream of the crop in terms of addressing head-on issues of, of GBV and femicide. We continue to collaborate with government in ensuring its implementation. We also have several programs focused on community and citizen engagement to create organic and tailor-made solutions to gender-based violence and femicide. We are focused on the mobilization of all actors in the space and strengthening prevention.
We are also meaningfully contributing towards government's prevention strategy and part of the broader consultation process. We're supporting all protocols on sexual harassment, bullying, and violence in schools to increase awareness. We're also promoting gender equality through engagements with organizations such as the GIZ and the Department of Basic Education on issues related to sexual reproductive health and rights, gender-based violence, and toxic masculinity among children and adolescents. We're using peer engagement initiatives such as the Girls and Boys Education Movement to drive these messages. We also care about promoting good parenting. We have a parenting project that focuses on changing perspectives on corporal punishment and busting the myth that violence equals discipline. We do not want to encourage a culture that can influence children to see violence as normal and may one day enable those, those children to be perpetrators or victims. We're also addressing online violence, which is a topic that came up quite a bit today. UNICEF is at the forefront of leading the fight against online violence we're through the promotion of online safety for children. We're working with the Department of Social Development and the Department of Basic Education in minimizing cyberbullying as it relates to children and empowering parents and children to be careful online, to limit their screen time as far as is possible, and to be alert of the dangers that exist in the virtual world. We're also fighting the exposure or to child sexual abuse materials as far as children are concerned. We continue to also provide mental health and psychosocial support through a partnership that we have with, with Childline that enables uh, children to access psychosocial support services telephonically through Childline. UNICEF will continue to respond. Where children's safety is concerned and affected, I will also continue to respond. I will work with UNICEF government and other stakeholders to respond where my safety and that of my fellow young women and our children is concerned. We will make our voices heard and we'll thrive for a safer South Africa for all women. Will you join us in this fight? Are you going to- Honorable member, honorable member, can you please reposition yourself? How about now? We can see you, ma'am. Thank you. And then moving on to discuss the, how we can use digital technology to advance communities. Digital technology, if used wisely, has the potential to transform societies. If it is accepted and applied correctly, it can improve the social and economic infrastructure that women can take advantage of to develop their careers and be active contributors to economic development. In today's world, successful economies use technology as a catalyst to social change. Technology can be used as a tool for community development and enable citizens to create a better future. However, access to digital technology remains a stumbling block in achieving this change. South Africa is still battling to fully tap into the fourth industrial revolution and the digital shift that comes with it. This has not been made easier by the COVID-19 pandemic that has, uh, that has cornered the whole world into rapidly moving towards functioning within the digital space. This digital migration has, of course, been easier on some societies than others. And for South Africa, it has come with its own challenges, particularly on how it has changed business operations, communication, and other economic so and social activities. It has affected the way in which people, particularly the youth, have access to social services, apply for jobs and opportunities that were ordinarily done through print and submit, which then completely became digital. That, coupled with a lack of connectivity and inadequate access to internet data, has presented additional challenges. However, it has also helped people move out of their comfort zone, learn new things and keep up with the digital times and be one step closer to moving on the same frequency with the rest of the world. The world has changed. There's no question on that. One minute left, honorable member. Some years ago, noted, exists today mostly due to digital revolution. To ensure that we develop communities through digital technology, we need to be innovative and robust in the way we design interventions. Our interventions need to be long-term and sustainable and can be used to improve the local industries that make communities and women strive, but also encourage the resurgence of more 
activities that can leverage on digital technology through increased educational interventions. And UNICEF is part of these interventions. UNICEF is making sure that women really through do move with the digital times and that children in school can access digital technology. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May I request Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Kuboshiane, to give a reply to the debate? Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Program Directors. Uh, the, I hope I'm audible and quite clear from your side, uh, Honorable Presiding Officers. Program Directors, uh, the Chairperson of uh, Commonwealth uh, Women's Parliament, and uh, members that have connected here virtually, members of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, members of the National Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, and our honoured guests uh, from Kenyan Parliament and UNICEF, members of the legislature for today, in the form of these bright young women representing the political parties in the legislature, Honourable councillors and uh, from various districts and local municipalities, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the people of the province watching uh, through television and uh, our social media, a uh, good day to everybody. Indeed, a society that instills in its own people, through nature and education, a sense of responsibility and care, respect for life and human rights, has a brighter future uh, with prosperity and harmony as it rewards. The many and very salient points that have been raised in this house uh, this morning and passed uh, all sort of resolution cannot be overemphasized. Ours now, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, is to hasten the implementation of what has been agreed upon today in order to achieve the goals as set out in the Sustainable Development Goals, as well as our own National Development Plan. On its part, the legislature of the province of the Eastern Cape must be true to its mandate, uh, that of uh, being an agent for public engagement and social dialogue, which today we have demonstrated. We must therefore create an enabling environment for the agency of young people to which their voices can not only be heard, but steer leaders in all sectors of society in the right direction, in pursuit of people living in a prosperous society that embraces humanity, protects the right of all, and create enabling conditions for the realization of human capabilities. We must be in a society that invests in knowledge generation, which will provide us with appropriate tools to respond to challenges we face today. The work done here in this session by the legislature, led by the Commonwealth Women's Parliamentarians, is a seed uh, whose fruits will be enjoyed if we toil together. We therefore want to commend the work done in creating a platform for more opportunities for young women, especially young girls, to show leadership. Uh, to this end, uh, honorable presiding officers, I will also call on all institutions of higher learning in our province, working with our government research institute to provide necessary information to design the most appropriate and proactive strategies to realize the most effective results within a Honorable Kubashane, you got cut off. Honorable Kubashane, we can't hear you. Honorable Chairpersons? Yes, we can now, sir. Okay. I was about to conclude by saying, to this end, I would also call on all institutions of higher learning in our province, working with our government research institutes, to provide necessary information to design the most appropriate and proactive strategies to realize the most effective results within a reasonable 
amount of time. We do hope that this generation of young women will pursue careers that will lead our society and nation to greater heights. On Wednesday, last week, we saw a launch of Eastern Cape Digital Skills Virtual Innovation Hub and hope that amongst this generation of young leaders, we will see novel ideas turned into practical solutions uh, to the problems that are besetting our society or society that is facing. We do hope as well as that we will be more aggressive in removing access to opportunities uh, to all younger citizens, in particular women, regardless of social and economic background. As a young Mark said, pondering on the choice of profession of a young man, and I quote, our work will be that, uh, will be for the benefit of all. Our deeds will live on quietly but perpetually at work, close quote. We dare not to let our guard down, lest we leave a legacy many would not be proud of. Acts of barbarism and lawlessness inflicted of, on women and children by men must be isolated and be eliminated, whilst collective efforts to nurture our young generation respectful of the rights of others, pushing each other to greater heights through innovation must be encouraged. And we are indeed encouraged by the deliberations of today. The resolutions, therefore, of this House uh, and also those that have been passed here uh, will be referred to the executive of the government branch led by the premier and the members of the executive and will be channeled to relevant departments and HODs and the director general's office and other organs of state for implementation. This legislature of Eastern Cape province will also monitor their implementation through targeted oversight mechanisms uh, with time frames over the short to medium term in order to have meaningful outcome uh, on our presiding officers and also monitor impact. The reduction of poverty, unemployment, inequality, GBV and crime will be our barometer by which we measure progress in terms of implementation and oversight. The CPA Eastern Cape sub-branch, honored guest leadership that is here, members of the media, will continue to support the CWP in implementing programs such as this one. To succeed, we must have willpower, and I'm sure that no adversity is insurmountable if we work together as one. Thank you very much, facilitators and program directors, presiding officers of this important parliament. Thank you very much. Uh, Asante thank, Sana. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. And uh, good, morn good morning, uh, honorable members of the House, our participants and guests. I greet and welcome you in our last uh, part of our program. Uh, my name is Tume Kakaya, member of the executive uh, CWP. I now call on Honorable Keleku to table e resolutions on the matter. Honorable Keleku. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, our honored guests, allow me to extend my revolutionary greetings to you this morning as we have gathered in this August house full of beautiful minds. Um, it is indeed a clear indication that the future of this country is in good hands. Honorable speaker, we as members of Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, Young Women, in the Eastern Cape Subnational Branch, gathered at Raymond Mishaba Chamber in Bishop on the 25th of August 2021 to encourage young women to take up leadership positions across society to debate and seek solutions to gender inequality. The scourge of gender based violence and femicide to identify opportunities to, for economic growth and social stability in the information age. Honorable Speaker, having critically interrogated the role of women in Africa agenda, 2063 and sustainable development goals with a view to maintain stream gender in policy, planning, budgetary and program implementation processes, as well as ensuring inclusive development. Seeking to find solutions to issue related femicide, gender-based violence, inequality, poverty and unemployment, which have got to be confronted with the necessary vigor. 
Honorable Speaker, noting that the future of a harmonious and prosperous society is impossible without gender equality and should be achieved. We resolve to honor their legacy by working actively for women's meaningful participation and leadership in parliament, government, civil society, church, private sector, and all structures of society and from a young age. Honorable Speaker, noting that South Africa has adopted the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, the National Development Plan 2030, and the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, which set out a sustainable development agenda for South Africa. Honorable Speaker, further noting the barbaric and gruesome murder of young University of Forte student, Ms. Nosik Elom Temeni, by her supposed boyfriend and whose actions should be condemned in the strongest possible terms, and to ensure that there is justice for the victim. Noting in particular that sustainable development goals aim to eliminate all forms of violence against all women and girls in the public and private spheres, including trafficking and sexual and other types of exploitation. Recent statistics from the Ministry of Police show a rising number of cases of rape, about 300,000 cases awaiting investigation due to DNA backlog. Honorable Speaker, further noting that the National Development Plan calls for investments in gender equality, as these yield the highest returns of all development investments. However, recognizing that these goals and aspirations will not be met unless the situation of women in South Africa is fundamentally altered. Noting that high unemployment in general and high unemployment of men specifically contributes to gender-based violence as the unemployment results in unproductive men who use drugs and alcohol as escapism from their plight and abuse women during their intoxication. Further noting, Honorable Speaker, the current and future impact of the digital age, the opportunities digital transformation will help to access to services, effectiveness and efficiency, and the disruptive effects on industry and labor markets. Further noting that it is the role of leadership to ensure that the beneficiaries of this digital revolution are the poor and not just the wealthy. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, we resolve as the following, there must be promotion and prioritization of infrastructure that responds to the needs of women. We must strengthen education about human rights and women's rights by the state of institution of civil society religious organizations and the media. Every platform should be used for clear messaging about gender equality and gender-based violence. Leadership in all sectors of society must be familiar with and be ready for the digital age and seek to understand its impact on society today in the future. The opportunities presented by technical and digital transformation should be enhanced to improve the inclusion of young women and provide the better opportunities for them. We must ensure that existing policy and reporting mechanisms are strengthened and sufficient space is created for further scrutiny of available, available information for the advancement of gender equality and women leadership in general. We must also ensure that responsible institutions are held to account for the slow progress towards the achievement of gender parity. This should include government's declaration for the 2020-21 financial yet dedicated for financial inclusion to give opportunities for youth and women. The implementation of the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide must be included in the plans of all organs of state, and this should be monitored annually. Our organization's movement and institution must recognize that gender-based violence is a pandemic that urgent intervention of multidisciplinary team of professionals to counsel learners both as preventative strategy and to deal with the specific cases. There is a need to introduce technology in as a tool to assist in the fight against gender-based violence, to track and provide support to victims and to highlight areas that are demonstrating high levels of gender-based violence. Efforts of international solidarity against gender-based violence must be supported through platforms such as the CITAWP. We then uh, resolved, um, Honorable Speaker, to ensure that these resolutions are tabled and passed in the provincial legislature 
Accordingly, the legislature must follow up on the implementation of the resolutions and report back on the status of the implementation. Honorable Speaker, I now table um, the resolutions of the House. Thank you very much. I put the motion and the resolutions on the matter. We are now going to call on Miss Bifanta for a closing remark. Thank you, Honorable Gaya, and thank you to all the program directors. <laughs> to our esteemed guests of the Young Women Parliament, Chairperson of CWP, Honorable Gupana, Chairperson of CPA, Honorable the Deputy Chair of Chairperson, Honorable our esteemed members, we will also our guests. Honorable Fanta, your line is too bad. We are struggling to hear you. Thank you. Honorable, Honorable Hadebe from South African National Assembly, Dr. Andile Dobe from UNICEF as well as Ms. Nombu Somashe and all the CWP committee at large. All members of the Egypt legislature, our esteemed members for the Young Women Parliament, honorable councillors from different municipalities, Department of Education officials led by HOD, Eastern Cape legislature officials led by Secretary, esteemed guests, Ladies and gentlemen, and the people of Eastern Cape watching on television and on social media, good day for done. Let me begin by thanking you for your stewardship of our Young Women Parliament program. Thank you, Honorable Keleku, for the excellent resolutions she has just provided. That will help us to effect, effectively monitor implementation by our government. As a woman, I stand on SDG 5, promotion of gender equality and women empowerment, as a responsibility of all men, especially that in most cases they are seen as betrayers of GBV. In your opening statement, Honorable Chairperson, you had indicated that we should share and receive new ideas which we could adopt to further improve our oversight function and the work of our government. We have received very interesting inputs from both our esteemed speakers and our honored members. I believe immensely that profound experiences have been shared and good lessons learned. In 2019, CWP resolution of the Africa Region Conference emphasized the need for an, an intensive campaign for advocacy for more meaningful equal representation in Commonwealth parliamentary. It is therefore necessary for this not only transform society but also prepare for a future free of gender imbalances and hence the need for to fundamentally change in current structure through providing all women, young and old, the agency with such change. Many speakers have demonstrated good practical experiences in their speeches, and our honorable members have clearly articulated to us what they want to see implemented or taken into consideration by our government. It was important that we hear your voices at this level in respect to issues that directly affect you as young women in our communities. 
you have yeah. deliberated on the prevalence of gender-based violence in this country and how it adversely affects your family life and your areas of learning how economic issues affect you and your families and proposals presented to our government. As a Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, Eastern Cape sub-branch, it is in our interest to see the Commonwealth programs seen positively by all of its citizens, politicians, especially the young, without whom there is no future for the world. Statistics tell us that almost 60% of Commonwealth citizens are under 35 years old. Because of this, government across all Commonwealth countries should take into consideration the important issues raised by these young women during the session, as well as the proposals imposed. The use of technology as means to keep GDP or as an enabler has been critically noted First, the use of social media to report not to mock the incident of GBV is also critically considered. Serious use of anonymous reporting, Operation Pimpa or Theta of GB, as in most cases, communities keep quiet in fear of their safety. Most the use of gender lens as well supporting endeavors and survivors of GBV. In the same breath, we would like to express the presence of the team empowerment centers in our SAPS facilities. Though technology, we are not there, but slowly we are going there. What have made a matter, thank you for sharing Kenyan perspective. All the members here today, please take note that the resolution taken here will be presented to the House and thereafter will be taken as House resolution, and government government will further implement the resolution taken at this young women parliament. In closing, I want to express my sincere gratitude to all honorable members for the day, esteemed guests, for your wealth, input, valuable experience shared. With those two words and many that have been articulated, I declare the young women parliament closed. Please note that there are two pandemics that is ravaging our country, which is the gender-based violence and COVID-19. Continue wearing your mask, keep social distance, and wash your hands frequently. COVID-19 is still with us. I thank you. The session is adjourned. That thank concludes you. the discussion. That concludes Thank the discussion you. on this matter and the business for the day. May we please be muted in the last speaker to members. The session. Honorable speakers, please conclude the session. That concludes the discussion on this matter and the business for the day. The, the House will adjourn until further notice. The House is adjourned. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well done, Honorable Speaker. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well done, well done. Well done. Thank you, Well done. 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 Our children. In Zala, yeah.